OK, thanks. So, uh, so this talk is on the query complexity of black box search. And this is joint work with Akinori Kowachi and Osamu Watanabe at Tokyo Institute of Technology. OK, so, he, so it's a very simple setup that we're, that we're studying. So in the black box search problem, there's a hidden non-empty witness set, which we denote by W. So it's a subset of 0, 1 to the n. And in the problem, by, we, we get to ask queries, so yes, no questions about W. And our goal is to output an element in W with probability at least 1 half. So in the setting that we study, uh, we're allowed to use randomness to, to generate our queries, but the queries are issued non-adaptively, so simultaneously. And uh, this setting corresponds to a kind of black, black box framework for studying uh, randomized search to decision reductions for NP problems. So I'll say a little more about this as we go on. OK, so there are various classes of queries that one can consider. Um, so I'll discuss each of these. Uh, so let's start out with two, two trivial classes of queries that one could consider. So, uh, OK, so maybe the simplest kind of queries you could ask, well, a direct query would simply be, for, for some point x and 0, 1 to the n, does x belong to w? Or we could also consider arbitrary queries. So for any family of witness sets, we ask, is w in, in that family? So for these two classes of queries, the, you know, the query complexity of the, of the search problem is, is uh, fairly, fairly trivial to see what it is. So in the case of direct queries, it's clear that all, you know, 2 to the n, so all direct queries are necessary and sufficient to find a witness set in, in every w with probability 1 half. And for arbitrary queries, on the other hand, um, n queries are necessary and sufficient. And to see that, we could ask, uh, you know, consider the lexicographically minimal element of w. So we could ask a query which says, is the, is the ith bit of the lexicographically minimal element, you know, 0? So based on those, you know, the answers to those n queries, we, we know a witness. So is the, the, the setup is clear? OK, so the first uh, non-trivial class that we could consider uh, are what I'll call intersection queries. So an intersection query is a query of the form, is, does w have non-empty intersection with s, where s is some subset of 0, 1 to the n? And uh, it's also easy, it's easy to show also that adaptively, n queries are necessary and sufficient. So what about non-adaptive queries? So if we have to issue all our queries at once. No, he, here I'm not, because uh, the results I'll talk about are lower bounds, and they're going to hold, uh, you know, for, uh, you know, in the in a non-uniform setting. Okay, so there, so there's there's a an upper bound for this for this problem, which is actually in fact a uniform upper bound, which shows that uh, black box. Adaptive or non -adaptive? No, now we're from now on everything I'm talking about is non-adaptive. So, so um, this algorithm of Ben David, Chor, Goldreich, and Luby shows that we can solve black box search with order of n squared intersection queries. You try all sizes. Of, uh, you, try, you try all sizes, right. So I'll, I'll say quickly, I'll, in the next slide I'll say how this works. But the, okay, so the first result of ours shows that, uh, that this n squared is tight for intersection queries in, in the black box setting. And I'll sketch a proof of that. So just to say a bit about this upper bound quickly, uh, so you can you can view their algorithm as uh, as a BPP algorithm which makes you know uh, simultaneous calls to an NP oracle. So this is giving a randomized search to decision reduction that solves, for instance, the search version of CircuitSat, uh, you know, given a decision oracle to CircuitSat, and the. Uh, the algorithm is using this uh, valiant Vazirani isolation technique. And the reason that I call, say that it's a black box algorithm is that it, it doesn't actually look at the input circuit C. All it, all it requires is an oracle to the witness set, the set of 
satisfying assignments for the circuit. Uh, and I'll just say very quickly how, how does this work. So supposing you know the si supposing you know that the size of the witness set is between two to the k and two to the k plus one, then you only need order of n intersection queries to 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 find a witness with with high probability. So this gives an order of n squared upper bound by just trying all sizes, as, as Avi said. So uh, if we have a random set S of den so if we know W is in this, this range, so for a random set S of density 2 to the minus k, there's some constant probability, say at least, yeah? Oh, this, this is what, the, this is what I'll, I'll explain now. So uh, for a random set of density 2 to the minus k, there's some constant probability that this, this set isolates a witness in W. That is, the intersection of S with W is exactly 1. Now, for any given S, with just 2 to the log size of S uh, simultaneous intersection queries, we can detect whether this S, in fact, is isolating a witness and, moreover, identify the, the unique element in the intersection. Um, the way you do that, if, if, if we just fix an arbitrary enumeration of S, then we could, you know, uh, let's call the elements X1 to X size of S. We can ask, does W intersect the set of XIs where the, where the teeth bit of I equals B for all, uh, okay, I guess I, I guess this should be a T, but anyway, I, you, you get the idea. I don't want to dwell on this, just to, just to point this out. Uh, randomness is essential because, uh, so by the definition of what it means to solve the black box search, we have to, we have to produce a witness in every W. For every, for every non-empty witness set, we have to be finding a witness with probability one half. So if you, f if you fix what your, what your queries are, then there'd be some W which, which, will, which will fool it. Okay, so... Uh, a slightly more general class of queries uh, is mo are monotone queries. So the definition of a monotone query is a query of the form is f of w equal to 1, where f is some monotone function of witness sets. So it's, it's clear that every intersection query is monotone. And in fact, uh, our, our lower bound naturally holds for the class of monotone queries. So we show that uh, solving black box search, even with monotone queries, requires omega of n squared queries. And then uh, finally, the, 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 the class that we're ultimately interested in studying are the class of what I'll call NP queries. So NP queries are, are going to also generalize intersection queries, but it's going to be uh, incomparable with the class of monotone queries. So here's the definition. So an NP query is a query of the form, um, is the output of A on W equal to 1, where A is some fixed non-deterministic algorithm, which is making polynomial and then direct queries, and outputs a single bit. So A is an algorithm, and you know, it, it non-deterministically is asking about poly and n um, elements in, in 0, 1 to the n, and learns whether or not those are in the set W, and then outputs 0 or 1. A is allowed to make adaptive queries, although without loss. Right, so, it, so, so exactly. So yeah, a priori could use, it could be non-adaptive, but it can just guess the answers ahead of time and verify. Can you tell me, is there an interaction between the algorithm in the query algorithm and the witness set? I mean, just in you know, sort of something beyond the intersection of witness squares, just something just to, to have as a, a model of the machine? Uh, so it's a good question. So it's, it's hard to think how, how it would be useful beyond that. So in a way, maybe the... The, our, our result shows that, uh, in a way, intersection queries are, are as good as NP queries. Uh, so, 
OK, and just to point out, so A can, of course, guess a witness in W, but it, it, it can't, for instance, guess the lexicographically minimal element of W. And to point out, so NP queries are not necessarily monotone and vice versa, but uh, we can see that every intersection query is an NP query. So given some subset S of 0, 1 to the N, if we want you know, the intersection query for S, well, we can just non-deterministically guess an element of X and then simply verify that X is in W using a single direct query. Right, exactly, yeah. So this is right. So if, so if S is polynomial time decidable, then this corresponds to you know, what, what an NP machine could do given oracle access to the, to the witness set. OK, and so the kind of our main theorem shows that black box search requires uh, n squared NP queries. Right, so. And one way to interpret this result is it's kind of showing that the procedure of Ben David et al. achieves the optimal query complexity among all black box uh, search to decision reductions for NP. Uh, so, so in fact, I yeah, it wouldn't it wouldn't change uh, if it's two to the n over ten, yeah. What wouldn't change? So, in other words, if we if we look not just at np, so in the definition of np query, if instead of poly n direct queries, we allow two to the two to the n over ten direct queries, uh, I'd have to check two to the n over ten exactly. Maybe maybe we, we well two to the n over something. Okay. Oh, so we're not. So this is. We're, we're not using uniformity at all oh. for the lower bound. Yeah. Yeah. There's going to be a. Right. So this is going to be an entropy argument. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah. So that's an interesting question. So yeah, I'll, I'll come back to that at the end. OK, so now let me uh, show you. So I mean, I, I thought this was a good talk to give here because I, you know, the proofs are very completely simple and self-contained, it's and it's a cute information theoretic argument. So let me, let me go ahead and sketch out the proof for you. And I mean, I assume people are familiar with entropy arguments, but you, know, you can feel free to stop me if you have questions along the way. So um, OK, so I'm going to. First, we'll sketch the proof of the easiest result, simplest result, which is the uh, lower bound for intersection queries. Yeah? This is not about uh, arguments. Uh, do you have access for how much credit you need? Uh, So right, so uh, non-adaptively, I guess you you don't need random with intersection queries. You would need only n, and you don't need randomness at all. Uh, sorry, adaptively you, you could do adaptively, but non-adaptively the the randomness is indispensable. Yeah. So, okay. So, what we're trying to show is a lower bound on randomized algorithms, which are which output an element of W with probability at least one half for every fixed witness set W. So this is the definition of what it means to, to solve the black box search problem. So we're going to flip this situation using Yao's principle. So instead, what we do is we fix a, we fix a specific distribution on witness sets, and we show that every deterministic algorithm which succeeds on this distribution with probability at least 1 half requires omega of n squared intersection queries. So this is you know, step 0 in the proof. So here's the definition of the distribution W that we're going to consider. So from now on, W is, is refers to the following probability distribution. First, we pick K 
k uniformly at random from 1 to n. And then we pick w uniformly at random among subsets of 0, 1 to the n of size 2 to the k. Okay? So this is the definition of w. And I guess this, this distribution was, uh, was also studied in a recent paper by Dell, Kabinets, Van Melkbeck, and Watanabe, who used this distribution to prove uh, an upper bound of order of 1 over n on the success probability of black box witness isolation procedures. So procedures which generalize the, the uh, valiant Vazirani isolation lemma. And by contrast, here in this work, we're showing a lower bound on the query complexity of black box witness finding procedures. And just to point out, our, our result is in fact strengthening it, 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 their result in the black box setting. In this paper, they also study uh, questions about de-randomization of witness isolating procedures. Uh, so there's more to this paper than this, but at least for, for this black box result, we're, we're giving a kind of stronger version. They, they prove that it's hard under some assumption. Right. Um, okay, so they mean they show that. Uh, well, the assumption is that uh, NP is contained in P slash poly. So uh, I, I don't want to miss. I don't want to misquote their results. So. Okay, so uh, so now that we've fixed the distribution W, we want to show that every deterministic algorithm which solves which solves the witness finding problem on this W has at least uh, omega of n squared queries. So now let, let's consider an, uh, an arbitrary deterministic algorithm which makes n intersection queries. So this is specified, the algorithm is specified by the following data. We have m sets, s1 to sm, m subsets of 0, 1 to the n. These are going to be the intersection queries that we ask. And then there's a function, f from 0, 1 to the m to 0, 1 to the n, which is producing the output of the algorithm. So the way the algorithm works is, so it, it, it issues these inter intersection queries, is SI intersection with W non-empty. It receives some answers, which I denote by X1 to XM, and it outputs F of those answers, so some point in 0, 1 to the N. Okay? And now since the, the algorithm's fixed, we're, we're viewing X1 to XM, as random variables, which are completely determined by W. So is, is this clear? Exactly. Exactly. So that's exactly what how the proof works. Okay. So and. You know, in this notation, he, here, just to restate the theorem, here's what we're trying to prove. So let's assume that this algorithm solves black box search on this distribution W. Well, th what this means is that the probability that f of x1 to xm lies in W is at least one half. Okay, and what we're trying to show is that this implies that m is omega of n squared. Okay, and and. The, this, this proof follows from two claims. First, we show that the entropy of f of x1 to xm has to be large, has to be omega of n. Second, we show that for, for each i, the entropy of xi, so the, the answer that w is giving on, the, on, on this query, uh, relative to k is order of 1 over n. Okay, so k is the random size. Right, log of the size of W. So let me show you how these two claims are, are giving the theorem. So okay, so I hear those claims. So let, let, me, let me walk through the, the argument, how, how it. Uh, OK, so first, OK, so claim one is, is just, this is just rewriting claim one. So. Um, Okay, so now the entropy of f of x1 to xm is, of course, uh, you know, at, uh, at most the entropy of x1 to xm, since f is just a function. 
And now the whole trick in the, in the proof is we just throw k into the mix. So this only increases the entropy. And now we, we, we pull k out of here just using the definition of, of uh, relative entropy. So the entropy of x1 to xm and k is the entropy of k plus the relative entropy of x1 to xm conditioned on k. And then we get a further upper bound just by splitting up this, uh, taking the entropy of each component here individually. And of course, the entropy of, of k is just log n, since k is uniform in, in 1 to n. And then finally, the second claim shows that this expression is at, mo is, well, is, yeah, at most log n plus order of m over n. So we've shown that omega of n is uh, log of n plus order of m over n, which means that m is omega of n squared. So, so it's, it's clear? And I guess, uh, yeah, so the, the, the little trick here is just the, the way we condition on this k. So now let's look at the two claims. Um, OK, I'm going to skip the, the proof of claim one, although it's fairly simple. But uh, I just want to point out that, in fact, we show something uh, more general. So more generally, what we, what we show about this distribution w is that uh, w has what I'll call epsilon witness entropy omega of n for every constant epsilon greater than 0. So I don't know if this, this is something which exists in the literature, but it, it's, it's a uh, natural concept to consider. So if we have a, a random non-empty set, so some, some random variable u which ranges over non-empty sets, and some epsilon, I'll define the epsilon witness entropy of u to be the minimum of entropy of y over random variables y such that y is in u with probability at least epsilon. So you think about this as a game where you know, the witness set is totally random as you've described it, mm -hmm. and someone with perfect knowledge about it is trying to just choose one output yep. and have that output have the smallest possible entropy. Yep. And the point is that there's no way to like string these together, you know, like one fixed y, you know, yep. the entire thing, which does a very huge constraint. Right, exactly. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. right. I'm sorry, I'm so out of this question. So I'm epsilon witness entropy is the property of a random variable over subsets? Yeah, over over subsets. Over non empty subsets, let's say. And, and so to, to point out, this, is, this, this statement implies claim one because, after all, f of x1 to xm is just itself a random, a random variable. And by assumption, we, sh we said that it's, it belongs to w with probability at least one half. OK, so and just to make further remark about this notion of witness entropy, so just to point something out, if, if one considered a uniform random non-empty subset of 0, 1 to the n, that is very small. That only has constant witness entropy, in fact. The reason is we could pick you know, the lexicographically minimal element of the, this random set. And, and you know, that random variable itself has uh, constant entropy. So. Oh, yeah, definitely can be correlated. Yeah, of course, yeah. Right. So. Uh, another remark, which will be relevant a little later on, is that if instead of considering uh, this, this w that we've defined, if we instead consider a random affine subspace of 0, 1 to the n of dimension k, where again k follows a uniform distribution in 1 to n, this also has epsilon witness entropy omega of n for every constant epsilon.
Oh, yeah, yeah, right. So this is, of course, uh, yeah, this is, of course, related to the, I mean, yeah. Th th this explains why this W is hard for the valent Vazirani, in a sense. Yeah, intuitive, right, exactly. And I mean, the thing with the highest witness entropy would be uniform distribution on singletons. <coughs> okay, so, uh, and the proof, the proof of this is, is, is not, not so difficult. Okay, but uh, let, me, let me focus on the second claim and show you uh, how the proof works of this. So here we, we want to show that for, e for every i, the entropy of xi relative to k is order of 1 over n. And just recall, so what is xi? This is the indicator for the event that si intersects w, where si is just some fixed subset of 0, 1 to the n. Okay, so here's, uh, here's just the, the w definition, uh, just unpacking the definition of the, of the relative entropy here. So the relative, this, this, this uh, relative entropy is just uh, one over well, the expectation of the entropy that uh, of the event that S i intersects W, uh, where conditioning on W having size two to the k. So I'm going to let T be the real number such that the size of S i is 2 to the n minus t, or in other words, si has density 2 to the minus t. And then we have the following lemma. If k, so, so k here is the size of, you know, log of the size of w. So if k is less than t, the probability that si is intersecting w um, is bounded by 1 half to the t minus k. And if k is bigger than t, then the probability that si intersects w is at least 1 minus 2 to the omega of k minus t. So what this is saying is that as, as k moves away from t, this probability is going exponentially fast either to 0 or to 1. And it, uh, by the way, this is quite easy to show. And it, and it, follows, uh, it follows directly that the, the entropy of this event uh, is bounded by one half to the absolute value of t minus k. Now, when, if we just plug this back into this expression up here, we get that the relative entropy is one over n times this sum of some geometric series like this. So we get order of one over n. Okay, so. So basically, I, I sketched out pretty much the whole proof of, of this theorem that black box search requires omega of n squared intersection queries. And by essentially the same proof, we're, we, we get the slightly stronger result that we also require omega so of. The, yeah, the proof works almost verbatim, right? Because it's just based on the size of the like, monotone area above the function. I mean, it works almost, almost verbatim, uh, just. Okay, I'll show you in the next slide. Okay. So wh why does this proof also work for monotone queries? Okay, so claim one is the same. Claim two, um, basically all, what we need to show is uh, that some generalization of this lemma that I mentioned before holds for monotone queries. So, uh, so now consider any, an arbitrary monotone function on, on witness sets. And for, for k from 1 to n, let p sub k be the expected value of f of w, condition on w having size 2 to the k. So if, if we assume f is a non-trivial function, then these, these values p sub i are increasing. So there's some unique threshold value t, such that p of t is less than 1 half and p of t plus 1 is at least 1 half. And then we appeal to the bolabash thomason theorem which shows that we have something, you know, a similar inequality on these, on these uh, p sub k. So for k less than t, this p sub k is, is getting exponentially close to zero as k, k moves away from t, and you know, the opposite thing holds for k bigger than t. 
Okay, so the bolabash thomason theorem, it's almost equivalent to this statement. I mean, uh, it, 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 it gives some relation on uh, between these, these, these values p sub i. Pretty much it says this, exactly this. Okay, so now uh, let me just say a word about the, you know, the, the, uh, how the proof of the main theorem works for NP queries. So the proof works by a reduction to the, to the setting of monotone queries. So I, I mentioned before that you know, not every NP query is monotone and vice versa. However, what we show is that every NP query is very well approximated by a monotone query. Uh, and, by w and well approximated on, on, on this W. And in fact, we make a small tweak to W. So instead of letting K be uniform from 1 to N, let's just say it's uniform from 1 to N to the N over 2. So this means that W has density at most 2 to the minus N over 2. So we're making sure that W will, is always going to be very sparse. And the, the only lemma we need is, is, is this one. So for every NP query Q, there's some monotone query Q plus, such that the probability over W that Q and Q plus are different is, uh, is uh, negligible. So this is all we need to show. So, uh, so just uh, to recall the definition of an NP query, so Q is non-deterministically making uh, poly N direct queries and returning a single bit. So we just make the observation that without loss of generality, Q can guess ahead of time the answers to these queries and just simply verify the, the values. So how do we define the monotone query Q plus? Well, we simply verify the answers that we are guessing are positive and we, never, we, don't, we don't actually look at the uh, uh, answers to the queries that we guess should be negative. And the point is that um, because this W is, is, is extremely sparse, the, 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 for the negative values, we, we, you know, we, don't, we don't need to check. We're not going to make a mistake very often. And, and the, pr this, the proof of this is just using some correlation inequality. So, uh, so W has, is, is uniform among sets of size 2 to the k. And here we're letting k be uniform in 1 to, to n over 2. So that means, so the density of w can be at most 2 to the minus n over 2. So you mean n over 2? Oh, so, so here I'm saying w has size 2 to the k, but yeah. OK, so. Right, exactly, yeah, exactly, yeah. Okay, so so this is all fairly fairly simple. So, yeah. So these are allowing you to make the sort of pure execution of of Q. You know, it doesn't matter if we ignore the other exceptions here because they're only they're going to be zero. Yeah. But for the way that you the way Q as I understand it works is like it's non-deterministic, so you don't know where Mm -hmm. So can you explain why it's okay to disregard the, the zero for the, the negative queries and all of these branches and still get the same result in each branch? Yeah, so yeah, we also had to think for a while to, to, see, to, to, to see this, but uh, uh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't prepare a slide just showing the calculation, the way that we're using the, the correlation in a Oh, I'm not. Uh, well, I mean, uh, okay, so this, this uh, I'd have to put too much notation to, s to kind of explain, to ma make it, uh, to make it rigorous, but uh, maybe I can explain it offline, so. So can you say it's just like for the correlation and what is the kind of correlation? Oh, I think it's, it's basically uh, what's called Harris inequality. It's just if you have, uh, if you have uh, two, two monotone events, then the probability, you know, A and B, so then the probability of A conditioned on B is, is uh, at least the probability of A by itself. That's the only, uh, that's all you need to show this.
second branch, then um, it's almost certainly not going to be disrupted by. Oh, right. So, so yeah. So. Right, yeah, so, so indeed, just the way, we've, the way we've defined this that, you know, okay, so you know, one is always bigger, you know, Q, Q plus is always at least, as, at least the value of Q, so you know, one side of it is, is clear. Okay, so, um, okay, so that, I mean, that, that wraps up the, you know, the investigation of, of this uh, black box, uh, you know, the clear complexity of this black box search thing, but now I want to raise one objection to, to the, Mm -hmm. uh, if you extend the empty, it should not be the empty search at all. Right. right. Because I don't see time in my other one. Exactly. And suppose you, instead of uh, uh, looking for the richness, you look for just the total search of the search in the cell. Mm. Uh, I guess this claim should also be supported. I mean, the same thing true with all random search in terms of the search in the cell. It's something I, I didn't I didn't think about, but it's oh, uh, it sounds plausible, but I didn't think about it. Yeah, that's a it's yeah, that's a, it's a good that's a good question to consider. So, okay, now now let me raise an objection to the to the you know the. The, the theorem that we showed. So I want to point out that for any given NP search problem, there are only two to the poly n possible witness sets that could, that could come up. But in, our, in the proof of our lower bounds, this distribution we consider on W has support of size two to the, you know, almost two to, the, two to the two to the n. So, uh, so the following question comes up. So could a black box search to decision reduction for some specific NP problem, like let's say 3SAT, achieve better than order of n squared query complexity simply by exploiting the fact that this hidden witness set is, is the witness set of some unseen 3SAT instance? But did you already answer this in the last talk on affines? Or I mean, oh, but I did, okay, I, I, I just, uh, so far, I didn't say anything about affine. The only thing I said so far about, about this distribution on affine sets is that it has high witness entropy. But I didn't say about the rest of the proof. So that's what I'm going to talk about next. So, so the, the natural thing to consider is this distribution I mentioned before. So instead of considering a random subset of 0, 1 of size 2 to the k, let's instead consider a random affine subspace of dimension k. So now this distribution is the support of a, of a s simple NP search problem. Uh, and as, as we mentioned, this distribution has witness entropy omega of n. So maybe the whole proof goes through. And so what we could, what we could show is that for intersection queries, we can prove this omega of n squared uh, lower bound, even for affine witness sets, so, so, so for using this distribution. But we, we couldn't. Uh, I mean, is the issue the Bolivash Thomson lemma? I mean, that the general yeah. Thomson lemma that it doesn't add up? Yeah. So, yeah, so, so, from in, so for the mono, monotone case, yeah, we, 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 it's still open. So now, now let me, let me uh, talk about this a bit. So let's see, what's the obstacle to proving the, to proving the monotone case for affine witness sets? So let, let f be an arbitrary monotone function of, uh, on, on witness sets. And, uh, and now we'll let pk be the expected value of f on a random, uniform random affine space of dimension k. And we'll, again, we we'll let t be this threshold such that p of t is less than 1 half and p of t plus 1 is at least 1 half. So what, what we conjecture is that this kind of lemma that we had before also holds in this setting. So that as, as k moves away from t, this, this probability is going either to 0 or to 1 exponentially fast. And this is precisely, we, we can prove this conjecture precisely in the case where f is an intersection query. So where f is a monotone function of the form, 
there exists, well, there's some fixed subset S of 0, 1 to the n such that f of a is 1 if and only if a intersects S. But we don't have a proof for general monotone functions. Yep. I'm because I mean, if a coordinate has like heavy influence, then it should behave much better than if it's a monotone coordinate, right? Um, yeah, that that would be nice. I mean, uh, uh, I don't know about the other case. But yeah. No. No. Okay. I mean, uh, so part of the reason I wanted to talk about about this this is I I really like this this question, and and yeah, I'm hoping that some people here will be interested to talk offline about it. But let me say a little bit more about this now. Mm -hmm. uh, the point is that you, you're assuming it to identify the psi of a notation, which is just equivalent to mean to identify the dimension, and then find the error mapping. Mm -hmm. So for, for intersection queries, I can prove that you that. I know. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out what's wrong. Uh, so it's an affine. No, no, so it's not. Oh, it's affine, affine subspace. Otherwise, otherwise. Well, actually, it doesn't matter. If instead of affine yeah, subspace, yeah. if I say linear linear subspace minus the origin, it's minus the origin. Yeah. Yeah. But the point is that the like this F one witness thing, if you know, if it's not an affine subspace, then that's what the origin. And also, let me mention that it, it's conceivable that by a different, by you know, cha changing our proof in some other way, or by a different proof, one could one could prove that even you know, for monotone queries on affine witness sets, you still you need order omega of n squared. This is just one. This is just uh, this conjecture saying that you know, using our our proof outline, you could. But uh, anyway, let me let me uh, uh, let me just say a bit more about this about this conjecture. So I want to point out that there there is a Q analog of the of this Bullabash Thomason theorem. With, but it all that it shows though is that uh, for k less than t, this p of k is is bounded by one half to the t over k. And we want something much stronger, the t minus k. So he, in other words, that this is scaling uh, linearly. And, and here we're saying this is going exponentially fast to 0. So the scaling that you want is that the sum of the two chains go other ones. Yes. Okay, so it's OK if it became quadratic with this. Yes. Uh, okay, I'm not sure linear or quadratic, but any, anyway, I mean. No. Okay, so now I'm going I'm to step away from the from the uh, you know the search problem setting, and let me just talk about this 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 combinatorial question. Um, okay, so. Just to, just, to, just to frame the question a little differently. So, let, so let, we'll denote by Bn the lattice of subsets of 1 to n, and 
L of n, the lattice of linear subspaces of 0, 1 to the n. So on one hand, this Ln is, is a, what's called a Q analog of this lattice Bn. But on the other hand, this, is, this Im Ln embeds into B of 2 to the n. Um, and this conjecture is, is kind of asking whether the threshold behavior of monotone properties in L of n scales like monotone properties in B of n or like monotone properties in B of 2 to the n. Uh, this isn't precise. This is just a, a, another perspective on, the, on this question. OK, and finally, let me, let me uh, try to boil down this conjecture to, to, to a specific, a specific uh, statement that I'd like to prove. OK, so and, and I, uh, my feeling is if you could get a proof of this, it would, it would, give, uh, it would you know, settle the conjecture. So consider, let f be a family of k-dimensional linear subspaces of 0, 1 to the n such that f has density at least one half, meaning f contains at least half of the k-dimensional subspaces of 0, 1 to the n. So the shadow of, of f is defined as the set of k minus one dimensional subspaces of elements of f. So, so all the k, k minus one dimensional spaces such that they're contained in some k-dimensional space, which is an element of f. So, the core of our conjecture, OK, so if you could prove this, I'd be, I'd be very optimistic, show that the shadow of f has density at least 0.6. In fact, I think the answer should be closer to 3, three fourths. But just, just prove uh, that the density is at least 0.6. So when k? Independent of k. So the part of k is at least equal by constant? Yes. Even for k equals 2? Yes. Is it difficult for k equals 2? Yes. Is it difficult? Uh, yeah, for k equals 2. I, it, I think it's known. And where 0.6 is 0.51. Where 0.6 is, is yeah, 0.51. Although I would exp I'd expect it to be, yeah, closer to three quarters. Yeah, but I mean anything. And yeah, and anything I'd be happy with. Right. Okay. So uh, I also want to point out. So this is this is similar to uh, the kruskal Kruskal-Katona theorem. OK, I mean, it has, has a similar setup here. Chris Kalkatona, we're not concerned about the, the densities, but just the absolute size of f. And, and the question is, what's the, what's the uh, smallest sh that the shadow can be? But I want to point out, so there's, it's, it's a, turns out to be an open question in combinatorics to find a, compu a complete Q analog of the Chris Kalkatona theorem. And there is a version, OK, of the, uh, if people are familiar with Chris Kalkatona theorem, there's a, a version of this uh, due to Lovash, which, which was recently generalized to the vector space setting by uh, Chowdhury and Patkos. But if you, tr if you apply this, this theorem to our setting, all, all the only conclusion you can get is that the shadow has density 1 half to the 1 minus omega 1 over k, so something which you know, has a very bad dependence on k here. Um, so, yeah. So, so it's it's known. Th uh, there's, I'm sorry, I don't I don't remember the authors, but there's a paper which shows that there is no there's no ordering of the of the spaces of the k minus one dimensional space. Er, such that taking, taking the first however many guys in that ordering gives you an optimal thing. Well, but even if it's not optimal, I mean, I, I'm just asking whether you try. You can, you can order the vectors, and you can order the two subsets, which are both the vectors. Yeah. From some generator set to k plus minus or something like that. Yeah. Um, so, the, so there's a pay, OK, whether, so. OK, so um, okay, so I should say, so this, there's a paper which shows that taking such an ordering works for the case where k is 2. No, but, but no I know, I know, I know. So in, in general, I didn't, I, didn't, uh, I didn't try that uh, for, for arbitrary k. But uh, I 
have, uh, okay, so to say more about this, I mean, I have a, uh, a class of, of examples which I conjecture are extremal examples for, the, for this uh, Kruskal Katona, um, which, which would imply this. And, uh, okay, I, it, it's, not, it's not exactly what you, it's not exactly taking lexicographic ordering. Okay, doesn't matter. You yeah. have a feeling of what would be a bad situation, and you can prove that there is the art. Yes, e exactly, right. Yes, exactly, yeah. So this thing is independent of Kay. any class. Yeah, background. right. Right, so. And how, how does that thing change with Q? Ah, so with Q, what I'd want to show, I mean, uh, so with Q, I w I w so it should be the case for every, for every Q, there should be some constant bigger than one half. Here Q is two. Here Q is two, but. What I think should be the case is that if, for, for general Q, if the density of F is one minus one over Q, then the density of this should be at least one minus one over Q squared in general. Okay, and, and you know, this, is, this would be borne out by the class of extremal examples that I, that I have in mind. Okay, so let me, let me, since there's only five minutes left, let me just. Uh, oh, okay. Well, anyway, let me, in, in any case, uh, just uh, go back to the black box search problem and state some other directions that, that one could consider. Okay, so, so for, for, for a general binary predicate P, the, a black box search to decision reduction with respect to P, so the, the setting is that you have no direct access to the input X. Instead, you have query access to this witness set, the set of Y such that XY is in P. So for an NP problem, a specific problem like SAT, let's say, one could try to prove unconditional lower bounds for instead of black box model, but some gray box model where we have some limited access to the string X. For instance, some AC0 view of X or, or this, uh, this uh, what is it, re restriction access uh, model. So there's other, other, question, other ways you could try to extend uh, these unconditional lower bounds. And another direction that one could consider is, uh, well, are there any interesting complexity theoretic implications of, of an assumption like X has uh, clear box search to decision reductions with query complexity little o of n squared or even order of n. We haven't thought much in, in this direction yet, but that's also something one could consider. Ah, uh, so, so that's, is, okay, so we, we didn't consider that. The, so this paper I mentioned uh, that was in CCC, uh, look at something similar. They look at de-randomizing the, the uh, witness isolation. So I expect, because they, they were able to get results there, I expect there's something you could say along those lines, but I don't, I don't want to venture a guess. Oh, hardness results, yeah. Uh, I mean, one of the questions that comes to mind, I mean, if, say, I'm, in, I'm there, some the anonymization assumption, and you do get the field with parallel queries to n to, um, can you solve the third problem? And uh, this would cast some doubt on, uh, on this type of black box results, because black box results show that this is clearly not Well, 
Tim. I mean, I mean, in the black box setting, we, you know, we're not looking at the input x, so. Yeah, exactly. No, I, so I'm not saying you should show that they are false. Those ah. Are false. I'm saying that you have some doubt about what we mean. Sure. Okay. So, so that that's clear. I mean. Uh, Yeah, it's so yeah, that's also interesting. So yeah, so I guess I also should have asked the question, you know, of course we can look at different different is there another distribution on W which has support, you know. Ah, okay. No, so we, yeah, so we didn't Ah, right. I see. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah, so we, we didn't consider that, yeah. So you don't know whether it's between the point affine and another is a small family that doesn't really make a difference between the two? I don't know of an, expli of an explicit small family, no. Something that would be different than the strong family. Yeah. Um, yeah, again, I, I'm not, I'm not familiar, so yeah, I'd be, I'd be happy to consider it. So yeah, please give me the reference offline. Thank you.